Drinks, food, art, fun. This is Hops and Spirits Kentucky. Welcome, welcome. I hope you're having a great day, a great week, a great month, a great year. And if you're not, hopefully things will turn it around for you here soon. We got a great episode for you this week as we talk with the first ever meadery in Lexington and only the second one in the state of Kentucky as we talk with Myriad Meadery and their owners for our Q&A this week. It's a fun chat. You won't want to miss it. Stick around to the end as uh, we have uh, some fun chats and some fun, fun questions for each other. But before we get into that, what's pouring Kentucky? Some news and notes around the state. Actor Norman Reedus, best known for his role as Daryl Dixon on AMC's The Walking Dead, is bringing his southern-inspired restaurant concept to Derby City this June. Nick and Norman's will be located on Whiskey Alley, the block behind Whiskey Row at 108 West Washington Street. Its menu features American fare like gourmet burgers, meatloaf, flatbreads, and brisket mac and cheese, and it'll be open for brunch, lunch, and dinner. It'll be the fourth location for the concept and the second one in Kentucky after opening up in Lexington. It also has spots in Georgia and Chattanooga, Tennessee. In Lexington, Georgie Social House, a sister concept from the folks behind Centra, has officially opened at 161 North Limestone. When you turn the corner of the Mother of Us All mural, and it's just up from the Jack of uh, the brand new Jack Brown's Burger Joint, you'll be able to enjoy housecrafted cocktails inspired by the iconic Georges across history and some good food as well. Like I said, I love the concept of those uh, cocktails inspired by iconic Georges. They have all sorts of them. You'll have to check that out. Bourbon with Hearts' latest exhibit, Bowtie Together, is open at the Galt House through Derby Season in Louisville. U.S. military veterans from Cruise Customs helped create the 50 hand-carved bow ties using bourbon barrels, which were then transformed into wearable art by regional artists. You can learn more about the exhibit and the organization at bourbonwithheart.org. The annual Kentucky Bourbon Festival returns this fall, September 15th through 17th in Bardstown. Tickets go on sale May 11th, but if you sign up to be a Bourbon Insider, you will receive early access on May 10th. You can find more information at kybourbonfestival.com. And then, and last but not least, the Campari Group recently announced pan, eh. The Campari Group recently announced plans to add a second distillery at its Wild Turkey campus in Lawrenceburg. The company will invest $161 million and create more than 30 additional jobs in Anderson County. The brand new distillery at the Wild Turkey campus will be designed to produce 5 million additional proof gallons of Wild Turkey bourbon annually, increasing its current capacity from 9 million to 14 million proof gallons. The project is expected to break ground by October of this year and be completed by the end of July 2025. The new facility will be located adjacent to the company's existing distillery. Up next is our Q&A with Myriad Meadery's Doug Price and Derek DeFranco. Enjoy. Remember to check out Hops and Spirits on social media at Hop Spirits, all one word, on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and Twitter. You can also find Hops and Spirits on YouTube and at hopspirits.com. Joining us here for our Q&A this week, they're the co-owners of a brand new meadery in Lexington. Let's welcome in Doug Price and Derek DeFranco. Hello. Thanks for having us. Yeah. It, and, you know, for Doug, this is your first time, but Derek, this is your third time on one of my podcasts. You're, you're like a regular these days. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Anytime you want me to be on, just give me a call. <laughs> <laughs> but see we won't be talking about beer this day this time because for those that don't know derek's co-owner of myriad but also of mirror twin there and uh, doug is also a brewer over at mirror twin and now he's the uh head mead maker there at, at myriad so uh, a little bit of a connection between the two and we'll, we'll we'll talk about that here in a second but before we get into that i call this the cliff notes because don't give me away too much we got questions to talk about but tell us a little bit about yourselves uh Let's see. You want to know about the meadery or about myself? And just a little bit about you. I don't 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 go too much. You can talk about you know, how how you're at the meadery, but don't go too uh, much. I got some good questions to ask. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> I was uh, raised up in Somerset and moved up here a while ago, about twelve years, and decided I didn't want to be in the auto industry anymore at some point, and decided to get into making beer. Whenever I saw uh, Derek was opening up a new brewery. So once I talked to him and got to be friends with him after a while, he ended up needing somebody to help him. And I got into it and throughout the, the years that we've been open, we eventually decided to open up a new place over here. And that's where we are today. <laughs> and Derek, for those that may not know about you, uh, besides the mirror twin and myriad backgrounds, a little bit about yourself. Sure. So 
I originally grew up uh, just outside of St. Louis in Belleville, Illinois. Uh, I moved here about 10 years ago and about three years after moving here, I had the good fortune of being able to start Mirror Twin. And Doug has been with me pretty much since the very beginning. I, I hired him two weeks after we opened and the Sunday, we opened on a Friday. On Sunday, I got the flu and I was sick for like a week and there was no one else to make beer. So we got really low on beer and my business partner was like, you have to hire somebody. And so Doug was the obvious choice. I'd actually, I brewed Blue Stallion right before that and I was training Doug to be my replacement. And then they didn't end up hiring because I guess they, they felt like they didn't need another person. Right. And so I was like, I, I knew he was already trained. I knew he was a passionate, you know, brewer. He also made mead as a home brewer. And so I hired him. And then he, he, almost seven years later, Thank you God. know, Mirror Twin was, <laughs> has been doing really well. And I, I wanted to allow Doug to do something that he was passionate and loved. And so my business partner, Mike and I, we, decided to go ahead and, and invest in the metery and it it, it, it kind of like just like with mirror twin you know it, the, the pieces just kind of fell in line a building became available it's it was in the neighborhood i mean it's literally right across the street from mirror twin yeah it, it the price you know the rent was very reasonable we have a very very good relationship with our landlords they love us you know we give them a lot of money. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that helps. That helps. <laughs> we rent more square footage in this neighborhood than most of the other tenants combined. Else. Yeah. So, but so it just it it worked out, and you know Doug was passionate, and you know it, it's funny because he's starting to see you know what it's like to be a business owner, <laughs> and everyone thinks it's like oh it's easy like. You, you get to make your own schedule. It's, you're, you're never off. You know, I mean, if someone calls me at nine o'clock in the morning and I can come in, you know, I'm going to be there. You know, sometimes like if I have my son, I, you know, it's hard to, to come back. But I mean, you're just always on the, the clock. Yeah, it's, it's a nonstop job. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> well, always. <laughs> well, and I was going to say, Doug, for, for you, when did you kind of, start doing the the mead because obviously that's a different type of thing than, than most are used to hearing ab about you know when you think home brewing you don't always think of mead but but clearly you've you've enjoyed that and that's something i i know you've been passionate about for a while yeah whenever i was doing home brewing i decided to venture out and experiment into something that wasn't you know full-on malt related so i started making mead i was kind of a nerdy guy anyway so it just seemed to fit uh, the first couple batches turned out not so great, but after that, you kind of get the hang of it and learn what you got to do to make make it good. And we took everything that I learned as a home mead maker and brought it to the brewery and used that kind of for our cider program. The cider program turned out very good, so now we've kind of made that to a, the whole mead area. So, because it works fairly the same way in a certain regard. And I was, I was curious about that. And, I, and I'll, I'll kind of follow up that here in a second. But Derek, you kind of touched on this and Doug, I'm guessing to, to a certain point too. When did the idea really though behind a meadery kind of come to fruition? I know obviously things lined up perfectly when the space came open there on National Avenue. And that's when it really, you know, <laughs> you know went into a sprint. But I'm, was there talk beforehand about this? Because I'm guessing Doug was making some good things behind the scenes and you were like, maybe this is something we could do. Yeah. So one time uh, I had some five-year-old age stuff I had sitting in the fridge and I brought it in for our anniversary party one time and everybody seemed to really enjoy it. And then our contractor that we use for everything, he uh, tried it one time and just went off the, off the rails on it. <laughs> He loved it. He loved it a lot. So what? he was he was a big impact in uh, helping these guys decide to start with me too. And for me, I would go on Untapped, and you know, if you look up the number one rated breweries in 
on untapped, like seven of the first 10 are meteries. And so I felt like there was an audience, uh, you, you know, with the first metery in Lexington, the second in the state. We also are really good friends with the owners of the void. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we saw their success with Saki, which, you know, is like meat in the sense that it's, you know, kind of a niche market. And we just decided to run with it. And I, I wanted to give Doug the opportunity, like I said before, because, you know, he, he's been with me from the beginning. He's worked his butt off and it, it was kind of my way of, you know, giving him a big raise. <laughs> uh, we, we, Have you seen that raise yet, Doug? <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> uh, we had originally planned on maybe waiting a couple years for a new building to be built over in the, a different lot. But when we saw that this building, well, somebody was scraping the stuff off the windows at one point. So we went and inquired what was going on with it. And they said they just randomly up and moved out. So... so I was going to say, I mean, did that like accelerate the plans? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, I'm guessing that accelerated the plans a little bit. Oh, yes. yeah, yeah. Yes. I, like I said, I wrote a business plan out in like two weeks. It was a lot of work. A lot yeah. of work. <laughs> but then we also had a bunch of equipment that we weren't using over at Mirror Twins. So we ended up repurposing that to use for the metery because I, it wasn't doing anything except taking up space over there that we honestly desperately needed yeah you think six thousand square feet is a lot but uh it fills up really fast well when three thousand <laughs> that's a cooler you yeah know, you yeah. don't have as much <laughs> yeah well and you know how did you all settle on on the name uh, of myriad and i know kind of officially it's myriad by mtb but how, what what kind of was the name and the inspiration behind it so we were looking around, we wanted something kind of similarly named and myriad means numerous and many. So it's kind of like also, you know, a mirrored image a bunch of times. So you could think of it that way. So it kind of has the same kind of flow in the name as mirror twin does. We also wanted a name that would really confuse people on how to say it. Yeah. Cause so <laughs> many people think we sell meat. Yeah. Here. You tell people you own a meatery, they're like, oh, a butcher shop? No. I've no, never heard anybody it. call a place a meatery. Yeah. Yeah. They, <laughs> they, a delicatessen, maybe? <laughs> it happens way more than you think. That's kind of terrifying. That's kind of terrifying. But, like, to your point, though, there are only two. There's what, a hive and barrel over, over in Oldham County and, yeah. and y'all. So it's clearly something that folks are having to get used to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one thing that we want to also expresses just like with mirror twin we have a myriad of options uh we've got beer we've got mead we've got uh cocktails. full liquor license we've got wine and the cocktails are really cool because they're all they all have a honey twist to them yes yeah. so for example our old-fashioned instead of using simple syrup or an, a sugar cube we use honey and it just makes it very unique and just like with marriage when we have something for everybody. I, I couldn't have summed it up better. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, cause I was going to say, uh, cause like you said, obviously there's a, a connection there to mirror twin. I know uh, there's a, a good portion of, of the tap list is the meat, but there's also the beers at, at, at mirror twin. How important was it to kind of have that connection there? Uh, cause like you said, the goal is for everyone to feel welcome here, whether that's beer, wine, mead, um, so every one of the group can can be there and enjoy something. Yeah, it was very important, like for one, to have the mirror twin beers on because that's part of what I'm involved with, too. I want to, you know, don't want to put a bunch of stuff on that I didn't have anything to do with if, if I have the ability to put stuff on that I do. So a lot of the beers we have on tap over here are actually some of the ones that we don't have on tap over at Mirror Twin. So if you're looking for a specific beer that might not be on tap over there, there's a good chance we might have it on over here. That, that is good to know because I'm always looking for cert, certain ones when, when I come by, by by to visit. Now, you guys launched it back in February. It's been a couple months. How how has the opening gone and what's the reception been? Besides those folks, they get confused that there might be a butcher shop there. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the grand opening was fantastic. And just kind of with uh, Mirror Twin, you know, things leveled out. 
And so now we're just, you know, continually growing, um, you know, every week seems to get a little bit better. And I think people are really receptive to it. The, the look of the place is, it, it has levels of kind of what mirror twin looks like, but we, we did a lot of, you know, we flipped some things, um, you know, at, at, made it look like its own. Yes. Too. Yeah. We gave it its own characteristic, but, you know, kind of familiar enough to say, well, you know, if you like mirror twin, you know, you'll be comfortable here as far as the, you know, the space and the build and all that. One of the phrases I like to use is we use it over a mirror twin is that we're identically different. I like that. that well, you're, you're family members and, and every family member can be a little bit different. But you still can like to know that in, you, sometimes you can tell that they're part of part of a, a family. And um, when, I mean, when people even as a twin brother, it looks yeah. slightly different. And if you met him, you'd be like, you guys are nothing alike. <laughs> you know, it's, it's except like if you hear us talk on the phone, <laughs> it's trippy because our voices are exactly the same. Our our mannerisms are very similar. Um, you know, that's where the name Mirror Twin comes from. And so it's just, it's, it's fun to be able to play off that dichotomy and it's just, I, I want to grow, you know, Miria just seemed like a perfect uh, step and Doug loves what he does and we're just excited about the future. Yeah, well, when you, when... you never work a day in your life. Yeah, that's not... <laughs> <laughs> there are some good days and bad days when when, when you're the boss. I, I know that. And and when folks get to visit the tap room, what what can they expect? Because I'm guessing rolling oven still plays a part part in it all, and and so forth, and and things yeah. like that. So we have uh, actually a little way you can uh, scan the QR code with your phone. Uh, every table has a table topper, and they'll actually deliver your food over here to you. And then also. On weekends, we'll have a different food option, like a food truck come in. Just yeah. because, you know, rolling oven is, is I mean, they're always busy. And so we just, you know, we talked to the owner, uh, Nick, and, you, you know, him and I, have, you know, obviously we've been business partners for almost seven years, We're probably close to seven years by now. And, uh, you know, so we asked him if he was okay with that. And he was like, yeah, it'd, it'd be nice to like, just take a some break. pressure off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, he's actually looking at adding another oven. Um, and so, you know, it's, uh, in my opinion, it's just like you always have to be growing. And, mm -hmm. and that's kind of the way we, we look at it. Yeah. You just always got to be doing something, have some kind of activity in, in mind, you know? Be ready for the future. Well, it gives folks a, a different option too, if if they're coming by to visit some, like you said, a slightly different uh, uh, there. And for those that don't are are unfamiliar with mead, can you kind of explain what is mead besides obviously kind of being just that honey based? Yeah, so it's been uh, known as one of the world's oldest fermented beverages, made with uh, honey is the prime fermentable. It can also uh, have you know, spices, hops, fruit, and all kinds of other things added later to it to give it different flavors, aromas, mouthfeels. And um, as far as I know, one of the cool facts about it is meat has been dated back older than the oldest known pottery. So it goes way back. <laughs> Ever since some guy found some honey in a stump that got some rainwater in it, the natural yeast fermented it. And he decided it tasted good <laughs> and it did some something weird to it. <laughs> Everyone has that person in their group of friends who like, if you give $5 to, they'll eat anything. And I feel like that's the person who was like, huh, that look, liquid looks weird. I'm going to try it. Might as well. <laughs> well, you never know, right? You know, <laughs> you never know now. Now, now, Doug and, and Derek, obviously brewing is kind of what you guys have been known for for the longest time there at Mirror Twin. But you, you talked about it, too, how this, the mead, kind of came off of the cider program there. So how similar is it to making beer or cider or, or, or wine to a degree? And how different is it from those? So we don't have to press any of our fruits or anything like that. 
but where we operate in this facility over here, it's a no boils facility, a lot like a lot of cideries do it. So you take your, your temperatures up to pasteurization. And then after you get to that point, you know, everything in it has been sanitized and you can put it into your tanks at that point. And that's the, that's the most similar aspect in the creation right there is that you don't have to do anything with the mash process or anything like that. You just have to get your mixtures correct and make sure your pHs are, are where you want them to be and all your chemicals are balanced. And I'll say with a lot of fermented beverages, there's similarities mm -hmm. because, you know, when you're making whiskey or a distilled spirit, uh, you, you, make beer before you make you know the distilled spirit right Every, everything has a little bit uh, of kind of intertangling and so you know having the knowledge that we've acquired as far as with fermentation over next door we, we've taken that to to the meadery to the side cidery program and you know the the trick with mead and with cider is to use the right yeast and also to provide things like nutrients because with with malted beverages when you're using barley they have nutrients in them and that helps with fermentation cider and mead and wine does not have that so you have to add it yeah you have to add a little bit extra stuff to make sure it you know gets down like to the final gravity that it needs to be and then you know you guys too it's not just a a mead that you make and i'm guessing you 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 know mirror twins known for being experimental trying some new things new flavors is that kind of what you're hoping to do with the mead there doug yeah so one of our best selling meads is actually our blackberry espresso most people don't think those two things would pair well together but <laughs> somehow they work you Put them in a honey fermented beverage and i'll go ahead and tell you it is phenomenal it's very good <laughs> so i'm guessing you enjoy even in the meat uh, with mead to doing some different things and bringing some different flavors out oh yeah for sure the great thing is you know mead like you can like the world is your oyster there's so many things you can do there's so many fruits you can use and what we found in the last seven years is that people really like, you know, new things. They like that we push the envelope. And I like being so, blasted with flavor. Yeah. <laughs> and so we, you know, try to, to carry that over in, in the meadery as well. And then for when folks go there in order, because obviously I know some things will say meat, some might be a spritzer, things like that. Can you tell them a little bit about what they would see on that menu and what, the different things could be in terms of what they're probably going to get flavor wise. Yeah. So, um, our session stuff and our spritzers are going to be a little bit lower alcohol than your traditional meads. The spritzers usually range anywhere from four to four and a half percent alcohol, kind of like your, your white claws and things like that. Everything's made with real fruit over here instead of like artificial flavorings and things like that. So you definitely are going to get, a nice punch of real flavor in there. The session meads are going to be like a still mead. They won't have carbonation into them. They also um, are a little bit higher alcohol than the, the spritzers, ranging anywhere from around like six to eight percentage around that range. And then once you get up to the traditionals and the high gravity meads and the, the fruited mellow mills, they, uh, they can range anywhere from, you know, nine to up to 18 percent so you gotta be and careful the right some of those do need to age longer because of just how harsh the alcohol flavor ends up being in them yeah but over and, over time they fill up like with with the other bold flavors that are embodied inside the honey and what i'll say too is the way that we have um the board the, the list of options is that on the left hand side it's meat and cider and then uh, on the right hand side, it's beer. And so you come in, it's also the uh, meat is written with uh, red and the uh, beer and cider is written with black. So it's, it's when you come in, it's, it's really easy to see 
and differentiate it, it, yeah. what we make and what's made over at Mirror Twin. Uh, I love that. And I love the knowledge because, you know, like I said, there's going to be a lot of folks maybe a little a little nervous the first time when, the, when they're ordering. And I know the bartenders there will take care of them and let them let them uh, learn learn as they go. Um, yeah, we offer flights and samples of anything, you know, that if, if you're feeling a little uncomfortable with what may be up there, you just want a little bit of something. We don't care to give you a little sample of it, you know, see if you like it or not. We don't want to give you something you're just going to toss away. So that, that's good business business there. Now, now Doug, I, I had to, to pass this along to you because, you know, last time I think I actually got to sit down and, and talk with you, my daughter was there and you drew a picture. You were doing a little doodle on the picture for her because she decided to give every one of us at the table a picture to draw on. And she oh, said yeah. she didn't like she didn't like your picture. Oh, I remember that now. <laughs> so, my four year old daughter. You know? I just yeah. colored somebody's hair blue or something like that. <laughs> I just didn't like blue hair on somebody. No, but but here's the best part. So a week later, we found it back in my, in, my, in my truck, and and I was like, "Hey, what do you think of this picture?" She goes, "I really like that picture." So it it just took her a little <laughs> bit of time to appreciate the art. So I don't want you to think that, you know, she, she's a harsh critic. She just didn't appreciate it at first. It's harsh. It is harsh in the art world. I'll just say that. <laughs> I was an art major in college. And kids uh, be blatantly honest. The best critics. Yeah, we'll go with that. We'll go with the best critics. Sometimes they can cut you down, down, down pretty good. And, uh, yeah. And it, it, it puts a smile on, on other people's faces when, when they hear hear that. But I had to let you know that, Doug. I didn't want I you to be. To Derek before. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I had to let you know that. I didn't want you to feel feel bad <laughs> about your drawings. But, you know, obviously, you know, you guys are still new there, there at Myriad. And, and obviously, I know there's probably still a lot of things that you're you're hoping to accomplish. But now that you kind of have settled in a little bit, you know, you're kind of getting your, your feet on the ground there as you've been open a couple months. What's kind of the next step for, for y'all and kind of the next goal? So we've got plans to be in the farmer's market on, uh, let's see, I know on Saturdays and Sundays we're planning on being on those. Um, we've got bottles of some of our new meads coming out. Uh, a little hint of one is a citrus mint. Kind of tastes like a straight gin and juice in my opinion but <laughs> yeah it's very similar i'll let you uh decide on that we've got our slushy machines out now with constantly rotating flavors and usually they're all mead infused also um, kentucky just passed a new law that wineries and meaderies and so basically mead is essentially a wine and so the license that you have to have is what's called a small town small farm, farm, farm winery. winery license and they just passed a new law that just like with brewers breweries now we can self-distribute and so that's <laughs> also going to be focus of of getting you know uh, our name out there and you yeah. know getting into some restaurants and bars yeah and just getting our product and name out there for people to know and see there's a, a game store yeah there's uh one store right now that's been carrying our product uh, villainous it's mm -hmm. over off of jefferson uh, they they've been carrying our uh, black currant mead spritzer. Pretty cool. It's the first account I, I ever delivered to. <laughs> Always hold a special place in your heart, right? It, it, it was and cool I, I was gonna say that that is a neat spot, a neat neat game spot there on, on Jefferson Street. And Doug, I also want to say it looks like you finally have gotten some sleep lately. And I'm happy to see that because <laughs> I know you, I know this was a labor of love and you were doing a lot of work, work to get this yeah. place open. Well, you got to put it in. You got to put the time in. Well, the good news is at some point, you, you know, you, you get a, a really good staff, you hire really good people, you take care of them, and then you can kind of step back a little bit and, and focus on other things. So, oh, yeah. and you know, what's nice because it, if Doug needs something, I'm right across the street. And, you know, if Doug has a question about something, I'll help him to the extent of my knowledge. And that's another reason why having this spot in the neighborhood made so much sense was because, you know, it's close enough for, you know, me to be able to help and, and you know, right. put, put some time in here as well. Well, it's a the spot everyone need, needs to check out because, like I said, I, I've always enjoyed Mirror Twin, and, and I'm excited to see what you guys are able to grow there with Myriad. Yeah, you really need to come check it out. <laughs> There's a good dad joke. 
<laughs> right. I have a five-year-old son, so I, I feel like it's my responsibility to tell dad jokes. We're open five days a week for business. <laughs> uh, mon- mon- what, Monday and Tuesday closed, is that correct? Uh, we're actually open every day of the week. Yeah. So. Ah, that'd be better. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I meant to say seven, but I had a lapse of my brain. Next week, right, trivia starts on Mondays? Yeah, trivia will start on Monday. Uh, we actually have a dog adoption coming in. His name's Sheriff. Ooh. He's uh, he's with the Save by Fate Dog Rescue. Um, and we're also going to be releasing the uh, Citrus Mint that day. Okay, so it'll be a busy, fun day. Yep. Oh, yeah, we're trying to pack Monday full of fun things. A myriad of options. <laughs> yeah, and don't forget about the Mirror Monday that's always on tap over at Mirror Twin. And so one thing I'll also say is that there's a new like, zoning thing that it's called a uh, event district license and the walkers are are working on uh, getting that and it would allow people to open carry throughout the entire block and so if if it gets passed which i think it will because the city seems to to be eager to to see how it works because i think that they're very in favor of helping businesses i mean they let us keep the spot in between our buildings as a patio so i I feel like you know they knew that covid was pretty difficult for our industry and i think they're they're doing a lot of positive things to help business and so if if that gets passed you can come in here get a mead walk across the street to to mirror twin you can walk around the block and i I think that would go all the way from eppings down to almost the end of the street over here yeah and you know, I'm thank- sure a lot of those businesses would like it if you uh, might have had a drink before you come in to buy buy some furniture or some Thanks clothes. We're eager to. I don't know. Every time I go to the grocery store after having a beer, I end up buying something more. <laughs> you just never never know. Uh, Derek, Doug, I, I appreciate you sharing a a little bit about Mead, what it is, and uh, of course Myriad there, and and I appreciate the time. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so much for having us. We, we you know. Even though we have busy schedules, we'd love to be able to do this stuff. And we'll think, make our time. Yeah. Doug and I, you know, love to share our passion, and this is a great way to do it. You're right. also a pretty cool guy. No, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. That's one 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 way to, that, that Derek's now been on three times. <laughs> Compliments <laughs> like that. <laughs> but Your Doug, hair Derek. Is great. Uh, <laughs> Doug, so- Derek, I really do appreciate it. Hey, let me ask you a question. Did your daughter oh. paint that painting behind you? No, no, no. Oh, She's not oh. that that good just yet. But she is really good at abstract. I'll, I'll call it that. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome, guys. This was a blast. Thank, Thank you, you so much for having us. Find more from Hops and Spirits at hopspirits.com. Thanks, everybody. Bye.